Welcome back to our review of the 2018 Bathurst Rally, Round 5 of the MTA New South Wales Rally Championship. But before we get into the outright competition, let's have a look at some of the other teams competing. Brett Middleton and Andrew Benefield were in the only front wheel drive rally car entered. They had issues for the morning stages with an alternator bolt break-in. They're only spare back in Sydney. 100 double caution. Remember he said that they were real. Um, 300. They worked hard on repairing the problem and were back in the forest for the afternoon pass over the three plantation forest stages. They may have finished dead last, but to even finish was an achievement. Look, it's been an interesting event. The first heat was a bit of a uh, non-event for us, but we had a lot of fun on the second heat, and I think it's fantastic to have a rally back out in Bathurst again. It's good to be back in the forest where the pine trees are. It's a little bit of a different environment to running, say, Batemans Bay and Mitter and the other rounds of the MTA Championship, but it's a really challenge. And um, the roads haven't been run by the uh, State Series for quite some time, so... Um, look, it's good to do something a little bit different and I'll look forward to the event again next year. Mark and Harrison Hudson were in the only non-Lancer four-wheel drive, still running after the midday service. But unfortunately, they wouldn't make it to the end, retiring at the end of stage six, the second run over Bob's Creek. Of course, there was also plenty of two-wheel drives in the running for a class win including the Ford Escorts of Thomas Dermody and Owen Moynihan, PJ O'Keefe and Paddy Skelton, Ryan Kelly and Connor Crowley, and let's not forget the Datsun 1600 of Gary Yeomans and Cam Baker. But it was the team of Mick O'Hagan and Michael Benson in the Mark II Ford Escort who would take the two-wheel drive class honours. But we'll cover all of this in our extensive review of the East Coast Classic Rally Series. Back in the hunt for the outright lead, there was only a handful of teams left. Stephen Arthur and Blair Halberg in the Lancer Evo 9 were sitting in sixth going into the midday service and then went on to set the eighth fastest time in stage five and the ninth fastest times in the remaining two stages, Bob's Creek and Maccabees. This was all they needed to hold on to sixth outright for the event. So now the fight is on for the top five. And as predicted, it's an all Mitsubishi Lancer race for the podium. Paul and Sean Newman in the Evo 4 were extremely consistent over the final three stages. They were the seventh fastest in each of the three tests. And that was all they needed to finish fifth outright. From an outright speed point of view, Thomas Dermody in the Ford Escort and Nathan Quinn in the Mazda RX-2 both had issues earlier in the day putting them right down the leaderboard. But for the Heat 2 places, they were right still point. powering on. Quinn finished the daylight, Bob's Five. Creek and the Maccabee stages with the sixth fastest time. A great effort, especially after the wheel came off, taking out the brakes in Heat 1. Dermody likewise was fast, setting fifth fastest stage times in each of the stages respectively. They would have featured well in the outright race had it not been for their earlier problem getting beached in the first run over daylight, losing over 10 minutes. Ron and Lachlan Moore came into the last three stages in fourth outright. He was over two minutes behind the leading three cars, so for him, it was more of a case of maintaining his position than trying to catch the cars in front. And that's exactly what he did, finishing each of the three Heat 2 stages in fourth 
and maintaining his fourth overall. And at the end of the final stage, Moore reflected on the conditions. I think they're a lot better than they used to be 15, 20 years ago, but they're still inherently, you know, it's a pine plantation stop turn. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of rough stuff out there, so got to have a strong car to, to finish the event. It's good to be back in sunny corner for a state round. Yeah, really good to have everyone out here. Going into heat two, Tim Wilkins and Jim Gleeson were sitting in second outright with a slender seven second margin back to Hatton. Wilkins was the first car into the second pass over the daylight stage, setting a time of 15 minutes and 5 seconds. 11 seconds quicker than his first pass over the stage. Next in was Brinkman, his first stage with a chip third gear. So it'll be interesting to see how they go, considering these roads are suited to third gear. This is the longest stage in the event at 21.53 kilometres and with Wilkins setting the pace, Brinkman was really on fire. He set exactly the same time that he did on the first pass. 14 minutes, 58 seconds. A seven second margin over Wilkins. JJ Hatton and Nathan Long were also having issues with their Evo. Hatton struggling with an underpowered car so it's unlikely they'll be fast over the 22 kilometres. Let's go on board the Evo for the long straight sprint to the end of the daylight stage to get his time. That's an amazing time, 26 seconds quicker than Brinkman. That also jumps them up a spot into second outright. Hatton is clearly chasing a rally win. Um, like a minute quicker. What? Yeah. You're having a big push through there, mate. Was I? Yeah. There's now just two stages to go. SS6, Bob's Creek 2, and SS7, Maccabees. Wilkins was fast, much faster than his first pass over the stages. He took a whopping 25 and 31 seconds respectively off his times from the first pass of these two stages. This was exactly what he needed to secure second in heat two and maintain his third outright. I tried my best, I can't say, I can't give any excuses, I had no problems or anything like that. We uh, just gave it absolutely everything we can and one less stage is a a little bit less wire tyre wear than what there was this morning, so uh, we actually had some grip through there this time, so it felt a lot faster, but still don't think it's enough to keep up with Glenn. I think he drove well all day, so I'm just hoping we got second. He just drove a lot better, so uh, yeah, good luck to him. Square left, square left. Hatton was on a charge. He won the Bob's Creek stage, five seconds quicker than Wilkins. And in Maccabees, he was still pushing hard. He needed to beat Brinkman by 24 seconds to win the event outright. His time at the end of the stage was impressive, but he'd only gained three seconds over Brinkman and had to settle for second outright yet again. Yeah, I've had good fun. I'm still here, finished another one. Don't know where we are with times. Um, would like to have a lot more power. I was down on power all day, but um, as Nate said, I actually think it made me drive better because I hadn't... I couldn't run wild, I couldn't do anything, I had to keep it neater. But um, I actually had fun even though I had no power, but we need to figure out what's wrong with the car for the next round, that's for sure. Hatton's impressive times in Heat 2, winning every stage, gave him maximum points and the Heat 2 win. Brinkman and Smith were still quick over the final two stages, beating their previous times in the Evo 9 Lancer. But it wasn't enough to keep up with Hatton but Brinkman's 51 second lead going into heat two was good enough to keep him out in front for the outright lead and the win. Co-driver Harvey Smith looked exceptionally happy with the win at the end of stage. He's good now, he's in a bit of pain, been in a bit of pain all day, hurt his back, but I think it's gone away now. <laughs> yeah, I was quite surprised, I thought we'd lose a lot of time because that's a third year rally, but uh, no, it was good, managed it pretty good. Let's confirm the placings for round five of the MTA series. 
And don't forget, there's just one round to go. And whilst it's looking good for Brinkman and Smith, anything could happen at the final round of the championship. Join us in Cooma on the 20th of October for the Kosciuszko Automotive Monaro Stages Rally, where we'll crown our 2018 New South Wales Rally Champions.